Hi, this is Kent Osborne, and you're listening to the FSF Popcast. The show where space is not the final frontier. Heck, it's barely even a button on your keyboard. Our show is brought to you by our charity sponsor, the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund, which supports the Wish Upon a Teen Foundation that helps out sick kids when they need it most. And just imagine the comfort you'll give Redshirt Crewman number 126. He'll know that when he puts on the red shirt and joins Kiff and Barry on their nutty adventures, that he didn't leave his family destitute and without hope, because the Red Shirt Widows and Orphans Fund has his back, and what's left of Tabletown. All right, guys, our guest today is a screenwriter, actor, animator, producer, and director. I got tired just saying all that. But who has worked on shows like SpongeBob SquarePants, Camp Laszlo, Phineas and Ferb, Adventure Time, Monsters vs. Aliens, Literally, we could keep going. His resume is amazing. Uh, but today, we're here to have him talk with us about a new show that's coming to Disney and Disney+. Plus. We're very excited to be a part of the promotional aspect of this and to learn about this show. And from the trailer that I've seen, it looks phenomenal. And I can't wait to watch more of it. So, guys, let's all welcome Kent Osborne to the FSF Popcast. Welcome to the show, Kent. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited. Thank you for coming on and and uh, taking some time out of your schedule. I mean, with everything you got going on, I'm sure it's a little a little hectic right now getting everything off the ground. So we're just excited that you were able to take some time for us. So, sure, yeah. so yeah. So before we get into anything about your background and what you've done, uh, as we mentioned in the outset here, you do have a brand new show, and uh, we're we're like I said, even though as I said, I'm excited because I watched the trailer parts of the trailer made me laugh and made me look forward to to watching this and it looks uh a little irreverent in spots it looks uh, funny in spots and, and i like the way it's going so what can you tell us about the new show called kiff and why should we all be as excited as as i am to watch this show on disney and disney plus oh well it's a, it's a very uh it's a very funny show it's very silly and has uh songs and it's very entertaining and um kiff is i um She's a little girl, squirrel, and she has a, a best friend who's a bunny. And she's she's very um, I wouldn't say hyper, but she's she's very excited. She's excited to be alive. She sort of wakes up every morning before the alarm clock goes off and and just can't believe how great it is to be alive and all the possibilities and potential of wait await her every day. And then her best friend's this bunny who's kind of chill and laid back and he just they love each other they have each other's backs they get in a, they both have a they love uh, the same types of movies and tv shows and they just they uh they're they're great friends and they get into a lot of hilarious adventures <laughs> sorry i just <laughs> did another interview earlier with h michael croner who's the voice of barry and they asked him this question and he boy he said it, he described it so well <laughs> and now nice. I'm, uh, I'm insecure about how I'm describing. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I think you did a good job. You know, from what I've read about it, they they said that uh, they they described uh, Kiff as as high, strong, and eccentric, and Barry as as a mellow fellow is what the, the yeah, write up good. said. <laughs> and yeah. uh, they said that, but between the two of them, they find a way to bring chaos to normal situations. Mm. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's hard when you're when you're working on these things and to to somehow describe it. I don't know why that's the case, but you you, you get get to the point where I mean, and I've been working on this for two years, and it's it's uh, all I think about sometimes. <laughs> but then when someone's like, "What's it about?" Yeah, you're like, "It's uh, <laughs> you get it's totally time. a thing. Don't worry about it. It's going to be great. <laughs> it's totally a thing. All right." So yeah, so it, it looks really good. And and guys, for those of you who are watching or listening, if you haven't gone to YouTube and watched the trailer for it yet, um, I think it's about a two minute trailer. Um, and it's I think it's like great. one minute and eleven seconds, but yeah, okay. Is it? Okay. I could be wrong. I've been wrong once or twice or three times. Ask my wife. Um, but uh yeah, I, I thought it was pretty entertaining and I thought it I thought it was a good representation of what we might expect out of the show. Uh you know, a lot, little zaniness, a little craziness, and uh, a, a couple of good, a couple of good laughs right there in the trailer. Their uh, their drama teacher is a witch. Mm -hmm. Okay, that'll be fun. Yeah, that'll and, add uh, to the to, yeah, that'll add to the fun for sure. Yeah, there's there, all the characters are animals, but then there's these sort of mythical characters uh, sprinkled in, and uh, they're just kind of very very normal everyday 
Like no one's like, oh, there's a witch. It's just like, oh yeah, she's a witch. There's a chipmunk. There's a water buffalo. She's nice. a witch. Yeah. So as I was scrolling through your IMDb, I don't know how accurate this could be, but I found it interesting that you have many credits and from many of the shows that I love, especially for Monsters vs. Aliens. Um, one thing I noticed was sometimes you had a credit story by story and writer. What is the difference between these three things? Oh, it, well, it, it changes from show to show, but I've been on some storyboard driven shows where the you write, which is more like outline based. So you write an outline uh, and then that gets handed over to a storyboard team and then they board it out and they're, the outline is kind of like a blueprint. And then the boarders actually end up writing a lot of the dialogue and the jokes. And, and so you can get a story credit that way or, or written by credit that way. Um, but yeah, it's. It, I don't know if there's like a real set in stone. Uh, yeah, I just but, found it interesting. I was like, "What? What is this? Like, why are there so many different?" Like, yeah, I, well, on, on this particular show, it's script driven. So we we have a writers room with uh, Lucy and Nick, or, or the creators are in the room with myself, and then we have four writers and a writer's uh, apprentice, and then we sort of like we figure out the stories uh, together as a as a room, and we kind of beat them out. And then we'll assign, when it's time to write the script, we assign it to an individual writer. And so that person will get uh, a written by credit for that episode. But if there were to be a story episode, it would probably be the whole room. Yeah, I've always been wondering about that myself because I've seen that on different people who work in animation, especially it seems like that's where I see that the most. Yeah, I, th I think normally it's just the, the yeah, the people who kind of figured out the the you know the premise or whatever, get a story by credit. And then if you actually sit down and write it, and that's what ends up being uh, animated or shot or recorded. That is usually the written by credit. Okay. Uh, Monsters, Monsters versus Aliens. I just did a voice. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, uh, I was like one of the guys in the beginning who sees the. I think my but, my character's name was Nimoy. Speaking of uh, Star Trek. But it was still a great character. So. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no, I think I I think I yelled Code Nimoy. <laughs> Code Nimoy. My name is Jerry. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's what it's all coming back to me. All right, so uh, Kent, now let's talk about your background and how you got to be where you are today. Because our show is, uh, even though Kathleen's not in, in today, uh, we are a trio of nerds. We love origin stories. We love to find out the background of the of the hero that we're talking to, uh, and you are the hero of our of our story today. So, what was it in the background of Kent Osborne that made you want to have a career in the arts? You know, and to be all these things, the screenwriter, producer, actor, director, and whatever else. Yeah, I think I think when I was a kid, I just I loved movies and television. And, and uh, you know, I saw Star Wars in the theater when I was seven and, you know, before VCRs. And my brother and I would just go see it over and over again. We saw it. I think I saw Star Wars 29 times, uh, you know, before uh, it was finally on like HBO or on VHS. And that's um, awesome. Yeah, and so I think I think I always wanted to be. Originally, I wanted to be an actor. I was like, oh, I want to. I, I think I can act. I can, I could, you know, be Han Solo. And um, <laughs> so, I think growing up, I kind of had my sights. You know, I, I was thinking I wanted to be an actor, and I I went to an acting school when I got out of uh, high school, and then I was trying to act for a while, and I was not really good at auditioning. I would get very nervous, and. Uh, it became pretty apparent that uh, I wasn't going to really make it as an actor. Uh, but then I started writing and I really liked writing and and that seemed to come a little easier to me and people were responding to my writing uh, more positively than my acting. Um, <laughs> and uh, one of the first jobs I ever got, I had written a script and uh, a comedian, Rob Schneider, read it and he really liked it. And then he hired me to write jokes for him. So that was my first job in Hollywood was uh, being sort of a joke writer for Rob Schneider, which also oh, cool. involved a lot of grunt work. I was usually <laughs> just kind of <laughs> accompanying him to <laughs> various places. And uh, uh, but uh, and then, yeah, from then I was kind of doing some, you know, freelance jobs here and there, trying to make it as a writer. And then I got uh, hired on uh, SpongeBob, uh, season three of SpongeBob. Uh, okay. and and that was yeah that was my first job and uh i yeah i was hired as a writer and then a storyboarder left and they asked me to fill in as a storyboarder because i had been 
doing comics. I was kind of a fan of comics and I had a little zine that I'd made and they said, oh, you can storyboard, like just storyboard an episode. And then uh, I did that and and just, I've been coasting ever since. Uh, cool. SpongeBob, boy, that really, <laughs> people love SpongeBob. Right? Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. It's Very got lucky. a huge following. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. So we all have projects that are like close to our heart. And there were, was there a project that you had worked on that didn't get as much as loved as you hoped? And what project was that that is still like close to your heart, but wish you had more attention to it? Oh, um, well, I had, I had a little, there's a little show called Cat Agent uh, that uh, is on YouTube. And there's sort of two, there's a, there's a version of it. There's like a season one that's these little shorts. And then there's a season two that are uh, 11 minute episodes. And it's about a cat who's an agent who represents fa cats of famous people. That is awesome. And it's never really explained how this person, how this cat agent makes a living at this, but <laughs> it's a living. He's got a pretty nice house in the Hollywood Hills. And um, there's a lot of cat puns and- uh, Perfect. There's some funny, funny voices on there, funny guest voices. Uh, but yeah, that's a little, that's a little show that didn't. Uh, yeah, most people know SpongeBob, but I don't think anyone knows Cat Agents. <laughs> I, I saw it on your IMDb list, but I didn't know. What oh it was. yeah, I think if you search it, you have to search it with my name because if you search Cat Agent, there's just like a, a million different Cat Agents. <laughs> Is it like a white round cat? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And now, yeah, he. Now he lives in Vermont and he makes maple syrup. So it looks like that. You're going to have to go look up cat agent right now. That's what I did there. Yeah, right it's, a little, it's a little sweary. You are saying family friendly before, but he, he, likes to, he likes to swear a lot to get his point across. It's basically <laughs> the, the whole premise. I was just imagining if, um, if, there, if I, you know, people leave their TVs on for their pets when they leave to go to work. Sure. And I was thinking about a person who leaves an entourage uh, marathon on, and then their cat, <laughs> their cat just sort of becomes fixated on Jeremy Piven's character. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome! Uh, yeah, uh, that cat would have a whole new, uh, uh, a whole new vocabulary, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that'd be fa oh, that's fantastic. All right, so that's cat agent. Yeah. And he's usually, right. he's talking to like, you know, Alec Baldwin's cat, trying to get him an extra ball of yarn for his celebrity appearance at a, you know, a new cat food uh, premiere. <laughs> it's just, it's really, yeah, it's like making fun of Hollywood, but. Sounds like a blast. I, all right, Kent. So out of the shows that you have worked on and the ones that I'm sure that you will work on in the future, uh, let's talk again about the, the many hats that you've worn in the process. And I, I like to talk to people about this because. Uh, especially when somebody has been a, a writer, a director, an actor on all these different things throughout the various shows that they've worked on, and, or sometimes even on the same show, they wear, you know, a multitude of hats, um, you know, to get to the point of actually having it, you know, uh, air and, and, and whatever else. Uh, but is there a hat, you know, amongst those uh, that you enjoy more than the others and what is it about that particular part of the process appeals to you as an artist hmm. well i guess yeah i tell people i'm primarily a writer even though i have storyboarding credits and um voice directing and voice acting um but i think yeah ultimately i'm i'm i feel the best when i'm just uh writing uh and all the shows i've been on until you know up to kiff um I've, my title was, um, you know, head writer or story editor, you only take the, you're only sort of involved in the process up to a certain point, which is like animatics. Like, so you, you write the story, you kind of oversee the storyboarding, you get the actors to do the voices, you make an animatic, you edit it, you kind of add in some temporary sound effects. And then at that point it gets, it gets taken over by the artists and the animators and they're, you know, doing prop design and just doing all these things that I never, it always was happening behind closed doors. I was always like, well, see you later. <laughs> like <laughs> and I had, I really had no experience, which is funny because people see my resume and they go, oh my gosh, you must know so much about animation. And there were so many um, things beyond that animatic stage that I 
really knew only heard stories about um but now in with kif i'm a, a co-producer so i get to sort of be involved in all these meetings uh helping uh, lucy and nick kind of make creative decisions um and those are really interesting to me because i'm learning a lot about animation and uh retakes and seeing the animation come back and having everyone in the room sort of like picking it apart and like finding the little mistakes and talking about the timing and uh talking about the color design and the, the lighting and there's just um so that part right now is like really interesting to me and and uh i'm usually just sitting in the room kind of like listening to everybody and uh every once in a while i'll maybe say something <laughs> and everyone says oh ken's talking um, but uh but yeah, that's that's the hat I'm sort of enjoying right now, just because it's so new to me, and it's something I've always like wondered about. Uh, you know, these kind of the artistic side of animation. Hmm. Okay, well that's cool because it kind of sounds like it allows you to have your your fingers in a few more things and get exposure to a few things maybe you hadn't worked on before. So that's kind of cool. You're learning and growing. All right, so let, let's look at the flip side of that. So if the producer hat is the one that you're enjoying the most. Um, now you said earlier that you had done some acting, but it wasn't really your thing. Other than acting, is there one that you like? You try to push off and like let somebody else do that part if possible, or? Oh, uh, I guess you know the kind of the boring parts of the job are you know when the the client says, "Oh, we need log lines for all these episodes," and you're like, "Okay, you got to go through and you got to you know it can, <laughs> it can only be a certain amount of characters," and then you're kind of like. Especially when some some of our titles are like, you know, this isn't a title. I'm using it's like Kif gets a sweater, and then they're like, we need an you know we need an episode description for Kif gets a sweater, and you're like, okay, you're like Kif in this episode, Kif gets a sweater. <laughs> it's like, well, wait, I'm not... <laughs> so you have to like get out the thesaurus and look up you know different words for get and sweater. Um, but uh, yeah, that stuff's kind of, you know, the kind of administrative stuff, I guess, like, um, you know, making sure the formatting is correct. And, uh, you know, I'm, I have a, I have a, a messy relationship with computers. I don't like computers, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, but no, I, I mean, the, the overall, the, the job's pretty great. I can't complain. It's, it's a really fun uh, working on a cartoon with a lot of like fun people. Okay. So you got me you got me thinking about your those log lines and how you said they were like on the boring side. And and then I got thinking about the AI stuff that has recently been, you know, a lot mm, more enhanced, I guess you can say. Yeah. What what do you think about using AI in writing in terms of being a writer? Yeah, it's it's really it's I, especially in the past couple weeks I've been sort of reading every article that's come out about it because yeah it wasn't until recently that I've seen people categorically like, oh this is going to replace writers and I'm like it is <laughs> so um, but yeah I think it's kind of similar to the way they're talking with with artists like it seems like you at this point you still need a supervisor to, I was looking at that Netflix show that had they were using the AI to do the backgrounds and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the original, like the, the concept art was made by a human. And then the AI first take looked horrible. And then the second take looked horrible. And then the fourth take, which was the human went in and fixed it up, looked great, you know, fine, you know, I thought, but I was like, well, wait, it's not, the AI is not replacing anyone because the, there's still a human, you know, bookending both sides of the process. And, um, so yeah, I'm still at that point where I'm like, well, it's a tool. I, th I still think it's a tool. Um, it's you still need a human involved. Um, and I was I saw an article they were asking the AI to write stand up material in the and they would give it a prompt say like do this in the style of Maria Bamford, right? And I was reading them all and they were all, you know they were la you know you're laughing at them because it's like oh that's like it thinks that's a like it's saying corny stuff like don't get me started on this and uh let me tell you folks like it's an ai trying to be like a stand-up comic right but there were a couple jokes that like really made me laugh uh even though they're kind of corny and that was the first moment where i was like i was like oh i was like hmm <laughs> like maybe but i gosh i don't know the joke was uh so this is an ai saying i'm getting older 
I make noises when I stand up. I make noises when I sit down. I feel like I'm auditioning for a sound effects library. <laughs> and I, don't know, I don't know if I'm, if I'm laughing because it's a, a, a robot said it, like, because that makes it really funny too. That a, right, a robot, AI a with robot. no concept of that, yeah. Yeah, a robot talking about getting older. Like, it's just, there's something really funny about it and it's kind of endearing and, um, but also, I I don't want it replaced by AI. That sounds de it's depressing. <laughs> I mean, pretty soon we'll have credits of AI director of sorts, of writer or AI art yeah. director. <laughs> yeah, I feel like at this point, it's it's more like something to help writers. Like you can just say, you know, give me, you know, get, you give them a prompt and then they give you something and you're like, this is horrible, but wait a minute, actually this kind of works. And then you can, you know, it makes it, it spark something in you, but, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I can't, I can't think about it too much. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair I'm definitely enough. like, also I'm all, you know, I'm like, I'm going to be 54 this year and I'm, I, you know, I'm looking at the, you know, 24 year old in our writer's room and I'm like, you poor like you're not gonna you're not. <laughs> like at least I'm almost, I'm almost out there you are so you made a you made a statement earlier and i want to i want to kind of go back to this real quick you you said that you had an interesting relationship with computers and so that made me think because we interviewed another writer uh, he's an author his name was jd slacker and uh he talked about his writing process where he writes everything you know pen and paper uh, and then, and then he turns that into his editor and his editor <laughs> works on, you know, translating it from written word to, so do you, how do, how does your writing process work? Do you actually work with a computer? Because you said you had an interesting relationship with computers or do you yeah. write it out in pen and paper or do you, are you, are you a napkin guy? Well, I do, I keep, I keep a, a I keep this, uh, notebook at my desk and that's where I do a lot of like doodling and, and, um. And, you know, sometimes you're writing, you know, you're, you're pitching an idea and it, the, the joke is kind of visual and it, people don't understand it. So you kind of draw it out really quick and and kind of show it. I, I don't want to show you any examples because it'll, there'll be spoilers, but, but, um, but yeah, so I definitely, yeah, there you go. <laughs> that looks like a Dharma uh, initiative notebook. <laughs> uh, I, I have a thing with, I love composition notebooks. So that's what I use more than anything. So that's yeah, where yeah. all my, all my notes and for the show and uh, yeah this one has this like really nice um you know oh nice uh, oh graph lines in it yeah graph lines yeah yeah um, nice okay but uh yeah and all the shows i've storyboarded on i've i've never gone digital i on adventure time where i was using post-its and pen and paper um but i do you know yeah we wouldn't be able to do this job like right now i'm in vermont and our writers are in los angeles and lucy and nick for the first uh, six months of the show, we're in Cape Town, South Africa. So we were dealing, you know, we were working over the computer and there's just no way we could have done it without having some of the software to assist sure. us. Sure. Um, but at the same time, it just, it's so humbling to, you know, call the, you know, you have to email the writing coordinator and be like, how do I unhighlight this word from this? <laughs> I've been trying for an hour to do this. I don't know how to do it. And they're like, you just nice. do this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was just curious because, you know, different writers have different processes and how they how they do things. And and so uh, it was just kind of funny to me to, when we had JD on the show and he was like, oh, no, everything's pen and paper. I don't do anything with a computer. He, oh, wow. He's like, I he's like, I submit everything. You know, they get a notepad and that's my book. And, wow. you know, and good luck to them and on editing it. So, it's so funny that that's like quirky now, you know, like that's how it was done for uh, five for years. ages, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I do. You know. I do like to. Uh, I'll go and walk in the woods, and I'll I'll dictate into my phone. I'll I'll uh, okay. start doing di if I have some dialogue in my head. I'll start like speaking to the phone, and I come back and transcribe it. And so, okay. Yeah. When you originally said, "Well, I'll go walk into the woods," I was like, and then you inscribe it onto every tree you pass. Yeah. <laughs> There's some great episodes out there. There you go. <laughs> Just got to go find the right tree. I was and now, a word from our show sponsor, Level Up Savers.
Their link can be found in the show notes. Welcome back to the FSF Popcast. So as a writer, you love telling stories. We love to hear stories. But some of the stories that we don't get to hear as often are, are the funny or the fun moments that happen behind the scenes, especially like in the writer's room. Like we almost never see that part of like the blooper reel. Uh, so what was like a memorable behind the scene moment for you when you were creating Kiff? Hmm. A memorable. Um. Let me think. I'm looking at our episode list from the early days. It's it's so funny. We, it's so funny to work in animation because you you'll you'll spend so much time on this one episode and then you don't see it for a year and then it comes back and then um anyway sorry let me think let me there's a there's a an episode that's in this first batch that's coming out um where Barry gets uh <laughs> Barry gets stuck in a harp. And uh, that came about because one of our writers, Sarah Lloyd, uh, was talking about, you know, those chairs that kind of sell them at Ikea and it's like the fabric kind of hangs over. Okay. Yeah, it's got the metal kind of frame and then it's like fabric. And she was in one of those and she was, she got stuck in it. She was trying to get out of it and she got stuck and her friends were <laughs> laughing. And so, yeah, things like that, like someone's telling a story and everyone's laughing and it's, it's kind of hard not to turn it into a story or like okay well how can, how can we that's a really funny premise like how can we craft a story around that moment you know interesting uh, yeah i'm trying to think of other there's you know there's a the road trip episode was came about because another writer quinn scott uh was talking about when she was a kid and she and her sister were on a road trip and there was a biker and her sister made a face at the biker and the biker kind of laughed and then Quinn made a face and the biker just got really intense all of a sudden. And she was like, what did I, why did why? <laughs> like, I didn't see it And that, yeah, that was just making us laugh. And so we kind of came up with that story around that. All right. Very cool. Well, uh, Kent, we're at the stage in the show where we like to finish off our, our list of questions with a silly question. Not that most of these have been very serious, <laughs> but uh, this is sillier in nature than the others. And so you can answer this as serious or as silly as you see fit. Okay? Okay. All right. Here's the question. What supervillain would make the best therapist? <laughs> and, and quickly, the, the, the difference between a villain and a supervillain. But it's That's a very good question. So... <laughs> One Either like, or. <laughs> one that's maybe a little more infamous than the other, I suppose. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess you'd want someone to end. And that's super villain. I mean, I'm, 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 I, it sounds obvious, but like uh, Moriarty from Sherlock Holmes, maybe? Uh, I don't know. I'm, running, I'm, oh, I'm thinking of Darth Vader, but that would, I don't know if Darth Vader would be good. <laughs> no, just therapist? don't talk about sand. You'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, I, I guess you want to someone that will empathize with you and help you. He's he's he had a lot of pain. Gosh, uh, I'm curious. What are you, what do you think? Uh, I went at it from a, a slightly different perspective. I was thinking of somebody who was probably incredibly intelligent but maniacal, not necessarily empathetic. Mm. So I thought of the Joker. Because he has probably half of whatever diagnoses that or diagnoses that you might uh, have thrust upon you, he has at least half of those going around in his own head. So I yeah. guess a, a little empathy there, because he uh, he would understand yeah. what you're and going he's been through. In, he's been in therapy. Yeah, you know he might he might be able to caution you the highs and lows of falling in love with your therapist. Um, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna you know what? I'm gonna go with Hal. I'll go with Hal from. 2001 nice okay since we were cool. talking about ai because maybe maybe a lot of my anxiety is about ai replacing me so maybe hal would have some some insight <laughs> it'll just be like i'm sorry you can't do that yeah well he wouldn't want to talk about have... this i'm sorry yeah and you oh, wouldn't be like oh is he trying to make me feel better it's like no he's he's a cold robot he's he's just telling me the facts yeah Ooh. I think I would choose uh, Silco from the Arcane series. Oh, yeah. He's actually, like, he's smart. Uh, he does have a little bit of empathy. And he does understand pain, I guess you could say. 
but just don't get on his bad side and i mean you're you're good to go <laughs> I was, when you first asked, I was, I was quickly trying to think of a supervillain that wore a sweater because I was like, you know, that's you want your therapist to <laughs> evil, Mister Rogers. Yeah, I was yeah, just was, thinking that because he's got the, you know, you'd have to have the handlebar mustache, but we can make it work. <laughs> handlebar mustache or a goatee, yeah, you know, the the evil, right, right, right. evil twin, right. the evil twin. Well, Kent, thank you so much for being on our show today. Where can our listeners go to find out more about you and your works? Oh, uh, well, if you. If you go to um, Instagram, that show I was telling you about, Cat Agent, uh, Cat Agent has a an Instagram called Real Cat Agent, uh, and he's been uh, doing some comics about his life in Vermont, making maple syrup. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Or you can search Cat Agent uh, Ken Osborne on YouTube and see those funny. If you like the idea of a cat who's watch too much entourage and thinks it's an agent <laughs> have i got the show for you but um but of course uh though i want everyone to watch kiff which is premiering tonight or tomorrow <laughs> i heard it was coming the 10th yeah march 10th all right uh, i think that's two days okay yes premiering on march 10th and then and then again on disney plus on the 15th i believe that's right. I think they're putting up a batch a batch of episodes. Uh, yeah, March 10th on Disney Channel at 8 o'clock Eastern and shortly thereafter on Disney Plus. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we will make sure that we put those links in our show description so that our listeners can go check them out. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And we want to remind, take this opportunity to remind everybody that subscribing is the single most important thing that you can do to make sure that we get more amazing guests like Kent Osborne here today to have these uh, funny moments for you to be able to listen to. And uh, please subscribe. It helps us well more than we can ever really tell you. But also, do what I'm going to do. Go check out Cat Agent because that sounds fantastic. But also make sure that you guys go and check out Kiff on Disney uh, and Disney Plus coming up here very, very soon. What you got there, Kent? Oh, there's a Peabody Award. It's pretty cool, right? Nice. Oh, awesome. They don't... They don't hand these out to everybody. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, so check out Peabody Award winner Kent Osborne's cat agent and also <laughs> Kiff as well. But remember, if for whatever reason you are not happy with the content of our show today, please feel free to lodge a complaint with the head of our complaint department. That, of course, is a young optimistic squirrel named Kiff. So why is Kiff in charge of our complaint department? Because along with her bunny bestie Barry, these two will do their best to make sure that the offending parties are dealt with, but not too harshly. You see, Kiff is optimistic, and Barry is a mellow fellow, so we don't see them handing out harsh penalties, which of course we certainly appreciate. But make sure to send in multiple copies of your complaint. Things get a little tend to get a little zany and chaotic around Kiff as she explores her zest for life and tries to politely cover and correct the wayward podcasters that you see before you. Either way, we get corrected, you'll be satisfied with knowing that your complaint was dealt with, and Kiff gets to continue on her lovable life in Tabletown. It's a win for everyone. Thanks again, Kent. Oh, Thanks, thank Kent. you. Yeah. It's been a lot really of fun. fun. All right, guys, that's going to conclude us today for the FSF Podcast. Goodbye. Ciao. On behalf of the rest of the hosts of the FSF Podcast, we want to thank you for listening to this episode. If you'd like to be a guest on a future episode, please contact us by means of Twitter or Instagram using the handle at FSF Popcast or go to www.fsfpopcast.com and click on the contact me link. Thanks again and hope you enjoyed the episode. Copyright 2023 FSF Popcast. Reference to any specific product or entity mentioned on this podcast does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by FSF Popcast. The views expressed by the guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. If you have any questions about this disclaimer, please contact us via email at info at fsfpopcast.com. Original music by Jordan Michaels.